Hi, uh, this is lecture 13, uh, online lecture 13. Remember, uh, above in the previous lecture, we showed that we defined what's a, in an integral domain, uh, what's a prime element, what's an irreducible element, and we showed that uh, prime elements are irreducible. So roughly, let me remind you, uh, suppose that R is an integral domain. Integral domain and an element zero P is, is prime. If whenever P divides A times B, either P divides A or P divides B. If this is satisfied, then we say that uh, a is, P is a prime number, prime element. And uh, if P is irreducible, another element is irreducible. If uh, whenever P is equal to AB, then uh, A is unit or B is unit. So that's the same thing as uh, only divisors of P, i.e. only divisors of uh, P are, uh, <clears throat> are units and its associates. We have done this above. And we showed that as proposition about, uh, in the, we showed that pr the primes are irreducible. If an element is prime, then it is irreducible. And the, how about converse? We ask what is the, how about converse? We will say that this is not true. So here is the example. Converse is not true. Example. So let uh, R denote this uh, A plus B squared of minus five. So this is actually, this is A plus B squared of five times I, such that A and B are integers. Uh, this is a subset of uh, complex numbers. And we will show that first thing is that we will show that this R is an integral domain. Second, we will show that uh, all the units are only plus or minus one. And three, uh, three is irreducible. Uh, four, we will show that three does not divide two plus square root of minus five. And also it does not divide two minus two minus square root of five, oops, minus, minus square root of five. And finally, we will show that, we will conclude that, we will conclude that uh, three is irreducible, is irreducible, but not prime in R in the string R. So here's the solution. So first thing is that, so let's, uh, in, in order to show that it's in an integral domain, it's, it's an integral domain, we will show that it's a subling of C. So let A plus B squared of minus five and C plus D squared of minus five be two elements in R then uh, their difference, a plus b squared of minus five minus c plus d squared of minus five. That is, uh, remember in this case, a, b, c, d are integers. Uh, this difference is a minus c plus uh, b minus 
D, B minus D, B minus D square root of minus five. Since this is an integer, that's an integer, B minus D is an integer. So this is an element of R. And if you multiply them, A plus B square root of minus five, and C plus D square root of minus five, Multiplication is a C minus five times B D plus A D plus B C square root of minus five. And this is an integer. This element is an integer, so that the result is in R. So this tells us that uh, this tells us that this is uh, R is an troubling of troubling of C and the C commutative commutative so that R is commutative and the one is in is one is, is equal to one plus zero times square root of minus five is in R so, uh, and also C has no zero divisors, zero divisors. So that means uh, R has no zero divisors. R has no, no zero divisors. So, so, so that R is competitive, bring with one, which has no zero divisors, therefore, R is uh, uh, an integral domain. So this is the first part. And second, so let uh, a non-zero element A plus B squared of minus five be a unit. Let's show that this is, uh, this is equal to we will show that a is equal to plus minus one and b is equal to zero. So for this, so if a plus b square root of minus five is a uh, is a unit, then there is a uh, then there exists c and d in uh, in integers such that uh, this a plus B square root of minus five times another element C plus D square root of minus five is equal to one. And if you multiply on the, the left hand side, you see that this is A times C minus five times B D uh, plus A C plus B D. Oops, uh, something is wrong. A C B D. This is a uh, A D plus B C square root of minus minus five is equal to one. So that means uh, A C minus five B D is equal to one, and A D plus B C is equal to zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, If A or C is equal to zero, uh, what, do, uh, what do we do now? So, so if we multiply uh, both sides by uh, of this equation by D, we have a c d a c d minus five b d squared is equal to d and multiply this guy second equation by c a d c plus b c squared is equal to zero so that uh, when you uh, subtract if you subtract the first equation from the second uh, we get bc squared plus 
bd squared is equal to minus t minus t or uh, or it is factor out b it is c squared plus uh, bd squared uh, five d squared is equal to minus minus t and similarly uh, if you multiply uh, if you mul multiply by uh, uh, multiply by b and multiply first one first one by b second one by uh, a uh, you get uh, let me write the, write the answer is d times uh, a squared plus five times b squared is equal to minus b so therefore therefore b is equal to minus d times uh, b is equal to minus d times a squared plus five b squared and if you replace minus d by uh, the above expression it is b times c squared plus five t squared a squared plus five b squared now if b is equal to zero if uh, b is not zero let's say if b is not zero then we have uh, c squared plus 5d squared and a squared plus 5b squared this is equal to one but this is greater than or equal to five uh, since b is not zero so this has no solution so no solution therefore b must be zero b is zero and similarly D is equal to zero. Uh, yes, uh, you write D is equal to minus B times uh, D is equal to minus B times C squared uh, plus five D squared. And if you replace minus B by uh, d times uh, a squared five plus five b squared c squared plus five d squared uh, if d is not zero if d is not zero implies that uh, you can cancel d so that a squared plus five b squared uh, c squared plus five d squared is equal to one and this says this is contradiction again uh, because five d squared is, less, is at least five, so that this answer is, should be at least five since we are working in the integers. So therefore, uh, therefore, uh, d is also zero. If a and d are zero, then one is equal to a times c, uh, so that a must be plus or minus one, so that uh, element a uh, unit a is equal to uh, a plus b squared of uh, minus five is plus or minus one. So therefore, uh, all units are, one is unit of course, minus one is also unit, and these are the only units. There is no other unit. Okay. B. Uh, well, we will show that, uh, remember, we will show that three is irreducible. So, so let's write uh, let's write three as uh, as the product of two elements, uh, c plus d squared of minus five. So that is uh, a times a c minus five b d plus a d plus uh, b c times square root of minus five. Okay, uh, suppose we write this way, this way, then we will show that one of them is unit. So that in this case, um, a c plus minus five b d must be three, and a d plus bc must be zero. Uh, 
Okay. If you multiply first equation by D, uh, multiply this by D and the second one by the C, we get ACD minus five BD squared is equal to three D and ADC plus BC squared is equal to zero. Uh, from here we get uh, B times C squared plus five D squared is equal to minus three D. And similarly, I will uh, similarly D times A squared plus five B squared is equal to minus three B. So remember we, when you change rows of uh, A and C and B and D, you get this equality. So therefore, uh, therefore, what do we have? Uh, therefore, the nine times B is equal to, if you write as minus three B times minus three B, minus three times minus three B, let's, let's write this way explicitly. Uh, it is minus three times minus three B is D times A squared plus five B squared and minus three D is, is B times C squared plus five D squared, A squared plus five uh, B squared. Again, now uh, either B is equal to zero or not. If B is not zero, if, uh, if B is equal to zero, let's say, if B is equal to zero, uh -huh. if B is not zero, uh, what do we get? Let's say, suppose B is not zero first. If B is not zero, we get nine uh, times, uh, uh, nine is equal to, when we cancel Bs, uh, A squared plus five B squared, C squared plus five D squared. So that, uh, so that A squared plus five B squared, uh, this is, uh, so in this case, uh, yes, uh, this can be, remember, it can be one, it's a divisor of, nine, it can be three, it can be nine. But uh, five uh, B squared uh, is greater, uh, greater than or equal to five, so that we have, so th these cannot happen, so that A squared plus five B squared should be nine. And uh, if this is nine, then C squared plus five D squared is one, so that C is plus or minus one, and D is zero, so that uh, this C plus uh, uh, D squared of minus five is unit. So if P is not zero, if P is not zero in this uh, multiplication, if B is not zero, uh, then uh, the, the right, uh, this C plus uh, D squared of minus five is a unit. It's, it's plus, plus or minus one. And if B is zero, uh, let's continue. What do we have? Uh, if B is zero, then three is a times C plus uh, D squared of minus five, which is A times C plus A times D squared of minus five. That means A times C is equal to three and A times D is zero. Since A is not zero, D is equal to zero. Uh, D is equal to zero. And A times C is equal to three implies that uh, A is, 
uh, which one? A C A times C is equal to three. Uh, I'm confused a little bit. If B is equal to zero, well, we did the case B is not zero. If B is equal to zero, we have that. Uh, yes, A times D is equal to zero. Then A times, yes. Uh, so, so, so that A times C is equal to three. Uh, so that uh, since A times C is equal to three, then A is, uh, is equal to, to, to three uh, plus minus one or plus minus three. Uh, if a is equal to is equal to plus minus one, then a plus b squared of minus five, which is plus or minus one, is unit. And if a is plus or minus three, then c is plus or minus uh, minus one. In this case, c plus d squared of minus five, which is plus or minus one, because d is equal to zero, is a unit is a unit. So therefore, uh, three is irreducible. So namely, what did we do? Let me remind, uh, re repeat it. If we write a plus b squared of five times three as c plus d squared of, squared of minus five, then either the first component product, uh, uh, first component or the second component must be plus or minus one. So therefore, uh, three is is unit. Oh, sorry, irreducible. Sorry, sorry, three is irreducible. Mm -hmm. Four. Uh, we will show that three is three divide does not divide to plus or minus square root of minus five. So if we write, uh, suppose it is. So we will get a contradiction. Let's say three divides three plus uh, two plus square root of minus five. Uh, so that two plus square root of minus five is three times some other element. Let's say a plus b square root of minus five, right? Uh, so that it is three a plus three b square root of minus five. But in this case, three a is equal to two, which has no solution. So therefore, three, three does not divide uh, two plus square root of minus five. And similarly, uh, if similarly, if uh, three divides uh, divides two plus minus square root of five minus five, sorry, then two minus square root of minus five would be is equal to three times a plus b squared of minus five, which is three a plus uh, three b squared of minus five. In this case, again, three a would be equal to two, and it is contradiction. Therefore, uh, therefore, therefore, uh, three does not divide to minus square root of minus five, let's claim it. So we have three does not divide. So let me repeat, three does not divide uh, two plus, plus or minus square root of minus five. Okay. Um, finally, the next uh, five. So we will show that, uh, Three is not prime, so so let let's say x is equal to two plus uh, square root of minus five, uh, and y is equal to uh, two minus square root of minus five. They are both in R. If you look at the product, it is uh, it is. Uh, two squared is four plus five, which is nine. And three divides, 
x times y. But as we showed above, 3 does not divide x and 3 does not divide y. So therefore, uh, therefore, uh, 3 is not a prime number, is not prime in, uh, in, in, in R. So that 3 is irreducible, but not prime, we showed. Okay, nice. Next. So remember, uh, remember what is uh, what's, uh, this. So let A be an element from the ring R, uh, where R is an integral domain integral domain. Or more precisely, it is um, delivering with one is enough. Then the, look at the ideal generated by I, A. And what is, look at ideal generated by A. By A, this is this ideal. And claim that this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, a is equal to this ideal, uh, R times A. Namely, R A such that uh, R is in R. So let, uh, uh, yeah. So R A is an ideal. Ideal. Uh, a is in R A because R has ring one. So A is a eight, one times A, R has one. This is, this is in R A. So therefore, since R A, uh, since this ideal generated by A is the smallest ideal containing uh, A uh, and R A contains A, so that this is inside that one. So, uh, the ideal generated by A is inside RA. And if you take an element from RA, then RA is, uh, is an element of this um, ideal. So therefore, well, RA is a subset of uh, A as well. So therefore, uh, in a competitive ring with one, these two things are the same. Ideal generated by A is RA or a, but this is also equal to A times R, of course. You can multiply either from left-hand side or right-hand side. Now, here's a definition. Uh, definition that I'll be an integral domain. If every ideal, if every ideal in uh, uh, R is principal, principal, then R is called, then R is called a principal ideal domain. This by or shortly we write uh, PID principal ideal domain. Uh, so remember, this is uh, for if A is in R, then this is a principal ideal. Principal ideal means it is generated by only one element. So. So we will show that the most basic example is basic example of uh, PID is uh, integers. Uh, the ring in, uh, ring of integers uh, is a PID. PID. It is an integral domain. We know. We know. Uh, Z is an integral domain.
domain. So let I be an ideal. Uh, if I is equal to zero, if I consists of zero, then of course I is generated by zero. So let uh, I suppose that I is not zero, so that there is an integer which is not zero in uh, I, but in this case minus n is also in I. So therefore, either n or minus n is a positive number. So that I contains uh, some positive element, positive integers. Integers, let uh, A be the smallest positive integer contained in A. So that is the minimum of A's, minimum of, uh, let's say, X's such that X is in A and X is, uh, in X is positive. So smallest uh, positive element in I. So if, so the claim is that this ideal I is, is changed by A. So since A is in I, uh, this implies that the ideal joint by A is inside I. So let, let's show the converse. Let B be an element of I. Let B be an element of I by uh, division algorithm. Uh, there is an integer Q such that uh, Q and R in Z such that we can write B as A times Q plus R, where R is uh, bet between zero and A, but not equal to A. In this case, R is equal to B minus A times Q, but this B is in I, this A is in I, so that R is in I, but uh, A is the smallest element containing, uh, contained in, smallest positive element contained in I, so that R must be zero. R must be zero, so that B is equal to A times Q, where Q is an integer, so that B is in A. So therefore, I is, is equal to, uh, I is inside, let's write this way. Uh, therefore, I is inside A so that they are equal. So that means every ideal in Z is principal, i.e. every ideal in Z is principal. So therefore, Z is a PID. Z is a PID. But well, clearly, uh, of course, uh, all fields are PID, um, PID, any field is PID. Oops. PID, because the only ideals are zero and uh, everything. Zero is generated by zero and one is, everything is generated by one. If, uh, if that is it. Okay. Uh, I guess I will stop here for today. today's. Uh, well, let me give you as an exercise for you uh, exercise. Let's show that uh, show that if R is a ring uh, is a field, so in particular R is the real numbers, real numbers then uh, Rx is a PID. Okay, I will finish here for today.